For me, my OCD like manifested as an intrusive thought. I'd think my family are going to die in a house fire. I'd had these compulsions, so like I'd have to like touch my head. And obviously, if I didn't do this, whenever they popped into my head, it would just like make me completely spiral and like freak out. Just tell us a bit about what OCD is, because it feels like there are loads of misconceptions, and people kind of throw the term out a lot, mm -hmm. don't they? As well, OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. Mine's characterised as like like an intrusive thought or something and then a compulsion um, and then obviously the disorder part is when it starts to like affect your life. Everyone thinks it's just about you know you're either like a neat freak or a clean freak or something and that's one of the misconceptions that I'm trying to not get people to know about. Some of my teammates obviously knew about this interview and they're like oh what's it for? I was like uh, yeah about OCD. You have OCD? Oh you're not that clean and stuff like this. I was like oh my god but um, obviously I understand it can affect people in that way. It's very different for me and I didn't know about these like intrusive thoughts and compulsions that people have with it until I was going through it. Back in 2019 maybe 2018 we were having like a mental health sort of day with British Swimming going through anxiety, depression, all the symptoms and it got to OCD obviously. There's me thinking like oh I've not got that and it listed out all these things. And I, I spoke to the doctor and I was like, like, hold on a minute, I've been you know, doing all these things. He agreed with me and then I got help set up luckily. For me, my OCD like, manifested as like an intrusive thought, just something unpleasant, like, oh, my family are gonna die in a house fire, or you know, I could just like, crash my car right now if I wanted to, like, just things like this. But the, the difference with like, just having them regularly and that OCD was like, I'd had these compulsions, so like, I'd have to like, touch wood, like, touch my head or touch my finger. And obviously if I didn't do this, whenever they popped into my head, it would just like, make me completely spiral and like, freak out. A car would go past the window at night time and I'd just think the worst. I'd be like, oh my God, like, like someone's gonna come out the car, come into the house and like, try and burgle the house but if I did this it would be fine and then there was you know like little things like with my alarm clock uh, I'd set it know it was set put it down turn over to go to bed and then I have to do that like three times so it's really really like draining because obviously like my mind just never ever switched off and then there were other funny ways it would manifest like if I didn't put I don't know four ice cubes in this cup you know this, this will happen to my family or you know like a tree would fall on my house and just stuff like that. Like it sounds obviously far-fetched, but like that's how my brain was working at the time. How were you kind of coping with that? I actually don't know. Honestly, like I even think back of how I got through doing a whole day of school and swimming, but then you put all mental health issues on top of that. Like, I don't know how I got through it, to be honest. I, I do remember like not being in a good place. It's obviously gotten a lot better now. But like back when it was at its peak, like it's honestly just exhausting. But you know, I had the right support. How do you think it impacted your swimming both then and like post diagnosis? With swimming, obviously it's so full on. And back when it was at its worst, you know, like I said, I was just like exhausted all the time. The funny thing with swimming is I'm also quite superstitious. So before I even knew that I might have had OCD, I just thought, oh, like these are some weird superstitions that I have to do, like stuff like when I'm behind the blocks, you know, have to do two jumps, I have to swing my arms twice each time and have to step on the block on the right hand side. The amount that I was thinking about it and the amount I was doing wasn't normal at the time. So it's kind of nice just to have that knowledge of it. And I remember like when it was like probably 2021 or something, we were doing like fly kicks and training, like underwater, you know, breath holding and had to do like a few lengths. No one could make it or anything, but this part, moment where I'm kicking, underwater and obviously this intrusive thought popped into my head if you don't swim this length underwater you're you know this is going to happen to your family whatever like something silly it was like starting to creep into my swimming um i don't you kind of think of that maybe it's helped me improve my swimming because i was doing these like amazing underwater kick sets and stuff but in reality it was just probably making me a bit exhausted there are some mental health kind of disorders whether it's like adhd um autism where there are things that your brain does that kind of feels like a bit of a superpower as well as like the stuff that's more negative. Did you feel anything like that? There was anything that was actually like really helping you? I've never thought of it like that at all uh, but I guess through my therapy I started just to realise that I'm more than just a swimmer if that makes sense so that, that kind of side really helped like even in day-to-day -day life like Never mind training and stuff. It's not much of a superpower, but I guess I'm always like switched on, kind of like a fight or flight mode. I know what's going on around me and stuff, but I guess you could that could be a good or a bad thing. 
Does it impact your sleep at all? It does kind of manifest into like poor sleep patterns and just being up and just like switched on all the time. Uh, so it can be quite hard to switch off which I guess is also why I quite like swimming, because once you dive in the water, you know, you kind of leave that behind. I've never really spoken about it in depth, like my OCD. I've obviously been open about my mental health issues and stuff. I think I mentioned OCD maybe last year might have been the first time, and it's been such a big part of my life. Even some of my teammates like today didn't even know that I suffered with it, because I think still because there are their misconceptions about what the d disorder actually is. So just as long as we can start just being more comfortable talking about it and getting the advice out there, I think, and just knowing what it is, like the education side of things. I never really knew of OCD as a thing. I just thought it was like someone that kept the house really clean. So that's why when I started having these, you know, horrible intrusive thoughts and these compulsions that I was doing, I was just so confused. Um, so that's why getting that diagnosis was a bit of a relief. Do you still kind of see it as a label that you don't want or has that changed? I don't label myself as having it. I feel like... I've got to the point where it's so much better than it was. Yeah, it's something I've dealt with and I still do deal with it, you know, here and there, but it's not who I am. It's just part of me and it's made me who I am. So yeah, I'm not like ashamed to say that I, I suffer with it. There's more education on it nowadays. So people are able to learn about it and they're able to speak about it. Me growing up, not even knowing what OCD was until I was 17. I think that just shows that it's just becoming a lot more comfortable to speak about these days, I think.